80s chunky cell phones make a comeback? We got a hold of Steve Jobs' to-do calendar. Samsung and LG are told to ditch Android, and we take a look at iTunes Match today on App Judgment. This episode of App Judgment is brought to you by the National Campaign Against Drunk Driving. Welcome to App Judgment, your source for mobile application news and reviews. I'm Graham Hancock. And I'm Mauricio Balvanera. And Graham, you look pretty good, considering you just came back from PAX. Yeah, I've had a, uh, a lack of sleep. I've yeah. been carrying around heavy camera equipment for a few days. Uh, we shot tons of Destructoid segments over at PAX, which yep. is the Penny Arcade Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of like an E3, but more for the fans of video games right. than for the media and press that are covering them like E3 is. Uh, I had cool. a blast. Yeah. We saw a lot of really cool stuff and even some mobile games uh, that are coming out pretty soon. Um, cool. So yeah, PAX, it was great. If you want to see more PAX coverage, head over to our Destructoid show at revision3.com slash destructoid. Awesome. All right, later on in the show, I'll be guiding you through iTunes Match. This is the cloud music service coming later this fall. Um, I'll be at least taking a look at what's <laughs> sunk up so far. It's still it's, going it's over there. still yeah. going since last night. Um, it's been a little hit and miss, a little, <laughs> little glitchy software, but um, you know, that's still why it's in beta. beta. Yeah. <laughs> but first, the top news stories that you clicked on over at twitter.com slash appjudgment. Follow us there and subscribe to us here. First up, get your Zach Morris on with this chunky cell phone case sold by Urban Outfitters for $20. Amazing. I want one. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So turn your, turn your $499 brand new smartphone <laughs> into what looks like something out of Saved by the Bell. Right, exactly. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I was part of that generation. I remember Zach Morris holding on to the mm -hmm. giant you know, Hello. status symbol. <laughs> yeah. um, I was a little confused. I was talking to you about this mm -hmm. earlier. Um, it says 80 cell phone, and Saved by the Bell was predominantly 90s. 90s. Show, yeah. Wall Street was, was the, I think, the big first reference. Gordon, Gordon Gecko is holding on to his Dynatech $4,000, like mm -hmm. the first cell phone that was ever out there. Wall Street 2, um, there's actually another reference to right. him. The um, recent remake that came right, out last right. fall. Or, or, or the yeah. sequel, rather. Yeah. And, and they're handing him back his, his, his possessions after he's gotten out of jail. And they're like, oh, what's <laughs> oh, this thing? That's a nice little homage yeah. to the 80s exactly. cell phone in that movie. So, yeah. Yeah, just chunkify your phone. Not bad. <laughs> It's very hipster. It uh, is. Urban Outfitters. Of yeah. course it's hipster. <laughs> All right, next story. We got a hold of a screenshot of Steve Jobs' to-do calendar um, now that he's stepped down as CEO of Apple, and it's looking a little creepy. Yeah, so if you take a look, it says, my first day as ex-CEO, 7 a.m., wake up, call Tim Cook to make sure he doesn't sleep in, and then have coffee and breakfast with family. 8 a.m., check in with Tim Cook again, relax a bit, read the iPad, and then FaceTime with Tim Cook to make sure he's doing okay. Uh, <laughs> Steve Jobs, <laughs> micromanager. Um, at least that's the way Joey of Tech has uh, painted him out. Um, it's, it's pretty funny. You should read the whole thing because it's, it's pretty hilarious. It's all the way up until he goes to bed. Right. Um, it's kind of little jabs at, at the jobs. You no, know, of course it's not. I mean, a lot of people are saying, you know, they were shocked that yeah. Steve Jobs stepped down. But yeah. I think there's a whole other group of people that are saying, you know what, I think Steve Jobs was just trying to get his job title in line with what was actually going on at Apple for the past three or four months. Right. And that he's been on medical leave and Tim Cook's been running the company. Yeah. So now, now it just sort of all makes sense. So. Yep. And finally, Samsung and LG are being urged to ditch Android. The Deputy Commerce Minister of South Korea has said, quote, in the long term, we cannot go on like this by solely relying on Google. That's, uh, that's a big, big claim. Um, and it kind of makes a little, little sense to mm -hmm. me. Um, so Google, of course, bought Mot Motorola Mobility. And what could potentially happen is they start to favor their own hardware for updates. Exactly. Making consumers go to Motorola to, as their their first choice in hardware. And while Samsung and LG, they, they came out with a public statement after all the news came out that they had bought Motorola, that mm -hmm. Google had bought Motorola, yeah. they were saying, we fully support the decision, it's great. Google is proving to us that they, they are banking on the future of Android right. and, and completely behind us. But the South Korean government mm -hmm. thinks otherwise. They yeah. think that Google is going to favor their own hardware stuff and they're gonna leave Samsung and LG sort of waving in the wind right. on updates and you know, so they'll be the last people to be able to innovate on this stuff. Uh, so it's very interesting to see the difference between what those companies are saying and what the South Korean government is feeling. Right. Although we're not sure that the, the government's actually going to be able to influence what Samsung and LG are going to do, yeah. but it's definitely interesting to, to kind of get a sense of the sentiment that's going on uh, between the government and those companies. And so. do you think it's a legit fear? I mean, uh, we were saying earlier that... I think that until I'd... Google proves that they are not going to be doing something like that, like right. whenever the next 
uh, version of Android comes out and it doesn't come out solely on Motorola first, uh, that, that's how you prove that to your uh, right. consumers. It, so. To me, it feels like saying Microsoft is only going to distribute through HP from now on. Exactly. And, and or that's Dell. Just not I mean, happen. And that never happens. So right. I, I'm right. not thinking it's going to happen. I think it's sort of an um, irrational fear for now. Right. So. Yeah, cool. All right, well, coming up, I'll be taking a look at the status of my iTunes match. Still going on yeah, next door. Yeah, <laughs> iTunes going. match is currently open to developers lucky enough to download the iTunes 10.5 B108 update last night as they've since closed off syncing. Yeah, I wasn't able to get in, so. You're the only one in the office that has iTunes matching well and may not be working that well. We'll see but. if it's working. Uh, but first, let's get social with Annie. Hey F Judgment, it's Annie. So the other day I asked you guys, what is your ultimate dream app that you would like to see created that hasn't been made yet? On Twitter, Jamie replied, you asked what app I would like to see made. I want to see one that can understand my southern twang since Dragon Dictation can't do it. Thanks, Jamie. And you bring up a really good point that a lot of dictation programs are not very good with accents. And in fact, if you feel like sharing an awful transcript with us, please do so on Facebook or Twitter so we can all join together and laugh at it. In the meantime, it's time for another search and rescue, and this one's for the music lovers. Lady Tina on Twitter wants to know, what's a good Android app for downloading full songs? So let Lady Tina know on Twitter, that's Lady with two Y's, and remember to use the hashtag AppJudgment so we can feature your comments on an upcoming episode. And as always, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, and leave us some love right here in the YouTube comments. I know you guys are as excited as I am about the upcoming Labor Day festivities, but remember, if you do choose to drink, please get a designated driver. Driving impaired is not only dangerous, but just plain stupid. The police will be out in force nationwide from August 19th to September 5th in a nationwide effort to crack down on drunk driving over the weekend. Do yourself and others a favor, drive sober or get pulled over. Not only do you put yourself and others at risk, on average, 31% of people involved in fatal crashes over the weekend are impaired. Don't be one of those people. Record numbers of law enforcement will be out in force this weekend, day and night, cracking down on drunk driving. So do yourself a favor, please drive sober or get pulled over. Thanks, Annie. Now for you Androiders that want to know whether or not you're sober enough to drive, I would check out Sober App. You just click on the drink that you are drinking, what time you drank said drink, and it tells you your current blood alcohol level. Now, I wouldn't use this in a court of law, so don't be an idiot. All right, on to iTunes Match. So Apple just released, what is this? Uh, iTunes 10.5 Beta 6.1 with iTunes Match. Now this is primarily for developers and it's due to ship out later this fall with iOS 5. So this is just a quick glimpse of what you have to look forward to or not look forward to depending on your take on cloud music. After installing the beta, you're prompted with the readme file, then you read the new EULA. You all read that, right? iTunes will launch and you now see iTunes Match under the iTunes Store. So iTunes is going to cost you a yearly fee of $24.99, but developers luck out with three months on top of their yearly subscription for free. This is, of course, the tax on us early adopter nerds that go through buggy beta hell. More on that in a sec. Once you agree to purchase the subscription, iTunes begins a three-step process. One, gathering information about your iTunes library. This process is fairly painless. Two, matching your music to songs in the iTunes store. Now take note here, this is a matching service. You're not actually uploading any music to your library, at least not in this step, the way Google and Amazon do. Those familiar with Lala.com about a year ago will be familiar with this process. Those of you who aren't familiar with Lala, welcome to Lala, because Apple bought them about a year or two ago. Three, uploading remaining songs and artwork. Now this process involves, I don't know, because the damn application keeps crashing on me. But luckily I can still show you what's going on over on my iPhone. Once iOS 5 is available this fall, you'll head over to your settings, scroll down to music, and oh, look what just popped up. Turn on iTunes Match and head back over to your music app. Songs will now have these cloud icons. Tap on the song to stream the music, or tap on the cloud icon to store the song physically on your phone. And that's about it. Now, a few minor details. Streaming isn't actually streaming. This non-streaming streaming streaming thing is actually your phone playing while it's downloading, which to me just sounds like beefed up buffering. Now iTunes is going to match your music at 256 kilobytes per sec, even if your original song was lower quality, and even if your music was pirated. Now I'm not going to say whether this is a yay or nay, because that's beta software and this is beta software, iOS 5, but I do want to know what you think. Let us know via Twitter, YouTube, or Facebook. I'm Mauricio, and you are lucky that you have been running beta software for the past few months on your phone, because it kind of sucks. See you on Thursday. Hi, I'm Mauricio, and this is Between Two Ferns.